Hello everyone, welcome to Vicar John Ministries, and my name is Vicar John, Pastor John Berg, and this is our weekly worship service. I'm so glad that you are able to join us this week, and, and uh, just so you know that we're here every week uh, trying to spread the joy and wonderment of our Lord Jesus Christ in, in through this, these services. And if there's any feedback or anything, just get a hold of me. Uh, if I can do things better or if you like something, uh, just get a hold of me. Uh, the announcements before we begin today are the usual announcements, uh, pretty much. Uh, you can find us on YouTube and Facebook on, under Vicar John or vicarjohn.com is a website and you can go to our web page. Uh, there's uh, time, anytime during the, the worship service, you can push the pause button and play music. Uh, which is uh, some suggestions for this week would be his name is wonderful there's something about that name he is Lord and victory in Jesus uh, just some suggestions for you for for that we also um, have a time you can uh, during our prayer time uh, ask you to push the pause button once again as you go into a time of personal prayer uh, when we're praying together and uh, that's so very important people we we should be in prayer our goal should be to be praying to God all the time, and, and that should be our goal. And I know it takes many, many small steps to get there, uh, but we can do it, so we can do that. So anyway, the, the title of today's sermon is My Good and Faithful Servant. My Good and Faithful Servant. And our, our uh, saying for this week comes from Proverbs nineteen seventeen: He who is kind to the poor lends to the Lord. And he will reward him for what he has done. So praise the Lord for that. Um, I think that's all we have for uh, uh, announcements. Uh, let us go to our, our uh, ringing in the hour worship. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let us open with a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for the love you give us, this love that never ends. And we just ask today that you put the Holy Spirit upon us as we come to worship you and only you. And if there's any bad spirits wherever we are, Lord, just cast them away from us so that we can concentrate on you. We just praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our call to worship this week comes from Psalm 105, uh, verses 1 and 2. And then we jump to verse 45c. Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Wonderful. Now we come to our time of prayer. And, and uh, as I said that uh, at the end of this, or the, well, I'll prompt you to push the pause button. Just push the pause button. And I'm not going anywhere if you push the pause button. I'll be right back when you, I'll be here when you come back. So just do that and go into your own time of personal prayer. So let us pray. Oh, gracious God and Lord of all, of heaven and of earth, maker of the fields of harvest, we thank you and ask for your presence as we go into the human field of harvest, spreading your love and grace wherever we go as we pray in the name of your blessed Son, Jesus Christ. And now we come to you in a moment of silent prayer. Please push the pause button. Oh, gracious Lord, we, we thank you, Lord, for all that you give us, Lord. And, and uh, this is a holiday weekend coming up, Lord, uh, Labor Day weekend, and there's many things happening. Uh, I'm thinking especially uh, special prayers of safety for those in the southeastern United States, uh, in the Florida area, where the hurricane is, is, is coming, and, and just uh, be with these people, Lord, and uh, uh, help them get through this, Lord, and help them to turn to you. Lord, we see things like hurricanes and we see earthquakes uh, all over uh, uh, and, and some uh, uh, natural disasters here and there, Lord. And we know that uh, these things will happen. And, and we just praise you uh, for getting us through these things, Lord. We see troubles. We see, uh, we see uh, our, our people uh, telling lies and creating situations and being deceptive and all kinds of things, Lord. And, and we just ask, Lord, to help us to turn to you. Help us to turn to you in all that we do. No matter what we're doing, no matter how big, no matter how small, Lord, help us to turn to you. 
Lord, uh, today we just ask, we, we'd like to hold up some people to you, and we ask that the, you bless them in ways that are pleasing to you, Lord. We're thinking of... Uh, uh, the poor and the hurting throughout the world, Lord, we pray for these people every week, and we will continue to pray, Lord, and, and just help us to make inroads into their lives, and, and help us to make inroads into the lives of the leaders throughout the country and this world, Lord, especially those that don't believe in you. Now, they, uh, they're talking about how they, they don't even want Christians in their political parties anymore, Lord, uh, how, how tragic, how tragic devastating is that lord uh, help us to work through these types of things lord lord uh, uh, there's we also ask that you be with our our troops wherever they may be be with our communities lord and keep them safe lord until we can come back next week and hear your word once again lord we just thank you and praise you lord for the love you give us this love that just never ends as we pray the prayer that jesus taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today uh, comes from Matthew 16. Verses 21 through 28. From that time, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You do not have the, in mind the things of God, but the things of man. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good will it be for a man if he gave the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what he has done. I tell you the truth. Some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The words of God for the people of God and all God's people said, Praise be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you and praise you once again, Lord, and we ask that the words of my mouth be your words, and they fall upon open ears and minds and especially open hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's scripture reading uh, that I read from Matthew should be familiar uh, to, to many of us. Uh, last week we talked about what it means to be a Christian. Paul lays, uh, lays all of this out for us in, in his book to the Romans. Today we'll be looking at what Jesus says on the subject. I don't want uh, anyone to hear this and think that they don't measure up and, it's, and that it's hopeless to try. This is because there isn't a person here today that does measure up. And that's the great part of being a Christian. We cannot measure up to Jesus, but through him we are able to do our best. Hopefully we can look at this passage and, and find how we are to deny ourselves and bear our crosses while still living life in this world. This could be a very tall order. Rick Gillespie Mobley tells the story of a man who was constantly, constantly complaining about the size of the cross he had to bear. He was convinced that he had it far more difficult than anyone around him. And he made sure that everyone knew it, too. We've probably all known someone like this. He thought if he could only talk to God face to face, his problems would be solved. 
This went on for some time and finally it got on heaven's nerves and they sent an angel to the man. The angel took him to the place in heaven where the crosses are signed. The angel said to him, all you ever do is complain about the size of your cross. You could pick any cross in this room and replace it uh, uh, and replace the one you have now. The man thought, hey, this was going to be a good deal. He walked into the room and he found crosses of all sizes. Some were as high as, as five-story buildings and, and most were very large. Uh, finally, he came across two crosses that seemed about right to him. One was, was three feet tall and one was four feet tall. Uh, he called out to the angel, this is the one I want. And he pointed to the uh, cross that was four feet tall as he didn't want to seem immature by picking the smallest cross. The angel said, are you sure that that is the one you want? The man replied, you don't know what I've been through. I'm not carrying one of those big crosses. And the angel said, okay, but the reason I asked you was because this is the same cross that you had when you came in here. Maybe, just maybe, our lives aren't as tough as we think. Before we look at this, let's start at the beginning of today's reading where we have Jesus explaining for the very first time that he must go back to Jerusalem so that he can be tortured, killed, and on the third day rise again. This is something new for the disciples. And of course, Peter has to jump up and say, never. And then Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. You have not in mind the things of God, but the things of the world of men. One of the reasons Peter is so great is that he is just like you and me. Uh, how many times have we said, have you said no to God? I'd be willing to guess that it's, it, it's been quite a few if you're anything like me. Uh, about 15 years ago, uh, we decided uh, to become a pastor. Financially, it's probably not a good thing to do, but we came because we had said no once before, and we knew without even talking to each other that this was the right thing to do. And it has been exactly that. It has been exactly the right thing to do. God is good. I used to get into uh, quite a discussion with my former pastor, Rick, about this very topic. He would insist that the cost of following Jesus was very high. Uh, and he had all kinds of arguments to back him up. Uh, I would always insist, and I still do today, that the cost of following Jesus is not nearly as high as that of not following Jesus, because if you don't follow him, you will end up in hell. I don't know about you, but that's about as high a price as there can be for, for just for anything. One of the costs that Rick would tell me about is what Jesus talks about next. We must deny ourselves. Jesus had purposely taken uh, the disciples to Caesarea uh, Philippi for specific reasons. Uh, this city was one of the darkest, most sinful cities in the area. It was totally pagan and they practiced all kinds of horrendous religions that included child sacrifice. In the passage right before this, Jesus asks his disciples, to, he asks them, who do you say that I am? And Peter answers correctly when he says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Peter is a hero. He is finally getting it. Jesus told him that the church would be built on Peter, the rock. After all, after all this time, G with, after all this time with Jesus, he is finally catching on as to who Jesus really was. But wait, wait, wait a minute. In this passage today, he doesn't realize what Jesus has to do. He is thinking that Jesus doesn't have to go to Jerusalem. We can avoid that place. We can go to other places where we'll be welcome. But Jesus cannot deny who he is and what his mission is. So he rebukes Peter in this most severe fashion. So Peter has gone from a hero to a goat in just a matter of few minutes. Have you ever done this? I know I have, and I will continue to do dumb things right after I'm feeling a little proud about myself. We all will. It is our human nature. I have done a lot of reading about denying oneself. Peter 
had been doing a pretty decent job up to this point. And then he let his guard down just a little bit, and Satan comes waltzing right in. He had been denying, uh, but he couldn't... He just couldn't keep it going, just like when he was walking on water. Remember? Just that little bit of doubt. In order to deny yourself, it's really uh, quite simple to say. We deny ourselves when we put Jesus Christ at the number one spot in our lives. This is such a, 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 an important concept that it's worth repeating. Y you cannot be number one in your life. Neither can your work nor your play. Your spouse cannot be number one. Neither can your children or anything about your home life. In order to have a happy, uh, healthy, well-rounded life, Jesus Christ has to be number one. And the reason is, is, is simple. When Jesus is number one in your life, then he in return will make your family or your spouse or whatever else that is important number one. Now, this is a terribly hard concept to understand. We need to remember that we are dealing with, a, with God who is outside of our realm of understandings. So, so you are asking, how can I have Jesus as number one and my children as number one at the same time? This is all part of your faith. This is your faith. You know that Jesus can do anything and everything. There is nothing good that Jesus cannot do. So... We should be able to trust him enough to make him number one in our lives to, and see what happens. I guarantee that you will love the results. But Pastor Rick was also right uh, uh, in talking about the cost of following Jesus. It will cost us our lives. When you come to Jesus, he will make a new you. Your old selves are gone. Gone is the alcohol problem, although it may take a little while. Gone are the loose, loose lips of gossip, though it may take a little while. Gone, and maybe in a, in a, again in a little while, are the lies and deceptions. I'm not the person I was when I was in high school. I'm not the person I was when I was in college. I am not the same person I was 30 years ago. And I praise the Lord for that. That person died and is gone. And that is what you all have to do. You have to shed your old selves and put on the new life in Jesus Christ. Now, the next thing that Jesus is telling us is to take up our crosses. Before we get to talking about this, I think we should remember what the cross was in those days. It wasn't a symbol that was up in front of the church like we see today. It wasn't a piece of jewelry or a, or a necktie or anything like that that we wear with pride. It was, one, it was none of these things that we think about today. It was a symbol of a torturous death. The Romans provided death on the cross for traitors and those who acted with treason towards Rome. Jesus was hung on the cross by the Romans because he proclaimed himself to be king. This was treason. Uh, they would also hang peop these people in very public places so all could see what would happen if they turned against Rome. So everyone knew what the cross was and, and no one really talked about it. Jesus had to carry his own cross uh, to Golgotha. Uh, that is part of what he had to do. When you take up your cross... It means that you take up a life of sacrifice and suffering. Often, and oftentimes we misunderstand this. Uh, many times we think that something in our lives is our cross to bear. Uh, uh, you know, it could be a wayward child or, or some disease or your station in life. Uh, these are not your crosses to bear. These are some of the things of life that you have to take care of. Uh, these are your challenges. Some of, the, uh, some of these things may come from denying yourself, but they are not your cross to bear. These things are just life. The, your cross to bear is something that you must do as a result of following Jesus. One of my crosses to bear may be some of the financial things that I might have had if I hadn't become a minister. Or, or it might be all the friends I used to have that have nothing to do with me today. Or it might be my giving up my life in this country to serve in another country. Or it may even be giving up my life 
if someone chooses to take it because of my love for Jesus Christ. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life uh, for me will find it. If you want to keep on in the sins of this world, then you will lose your eternal life. Really, folks, this is not rocket science. If you are here to pay lip service to Jesus today and not think about him for, for the rest of the week again, then I would say you have a serious problem. If you are here because you are, it's just something to do on Sunday morning, then again, I would say you have a problem. If, on the other hand, you are here because you are tired and broken from this world, then you are in the right place. It may be time that you ask Jesus Christ to live inside of you and start a great new life. Uh, just confess your sins to him and ask him to live in your heart. And for those of you who come here after a long week of serving Jesus, this is the right place to be to find a little rest. Hopefully we can recharge your spiritual batteries as we worship our Lord and, and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hopefully I, can, I, I am able to give you enough to get you through till next Sunday. That's the best I can do. And finally, we get to the part that I was tell, trying to tell uh, Pastor Rick. What good will you do if you serve this, this world well and lose your soul? Uh, that is the cost that I was referring to. What good are you doing if you are doing everything great by the world standards? You are to use Jesus as your example and go into the world giving food to the, to the hungry and sh giving shelter to the homeless and giving love to all you see in the name of Jesus Christ. These things and similar things are your crosses to bear. Uh, they are what you need to be doing. Jesus didn't come here so that you could have a nice place to go on Sunday mornings. He didn't come here so that you could quote scripture to each other. He didn't come to you so that you could point out the needy. He came to you to be a servant. And what a great servant he was and is. And you are to be serving also. In the next few weeks, uh, let's see if we can find some of the needy people in your community. Then let's invite them to church or invite them to watch this service. And if they are needy and, and don't want to come or do anything, then contact me and, and somehow we'll, we'll figure something out for them. You will meet them wherever they are and you will serve them. If you keep this in mind, you'll be denying yourself and taking up your cross. And this will be a good thing. I would like to close with a little story from Pastor Victor Meyer about a graduating class from seminary. This was the last time that class would be together as they left for their fields of service. One graduate in particular stood out as a great, great student. But Ed was going deep into the heart of Appalachia uh, to a very poor mining town. His compensation would be small. There were health risks there also. Uh, the nearest doctor was two hours away and disease and sickness were common. Plus, plus the people didn't like strangers. He would have to take the time to earn their trust and respect. But Ed had a lot going for him. He was very skilled and sensitive and could, serve, could have served uh, a church anywhere. He could have asked for a nice suburban charge and he would have gotten it. He, he didn't have to settle for this poverty and the ridicule that he got, especially from his father. Ed was asked why he had chosen this course uh, uh, for his ministry in life. Because, he said, I believe Jesus meant it when he said that when I find real life, I'll lose many things that I enjoy and take for granted. But I expect to gain a fuller, richer life anyhow when I consider what Christ gave up for us and the people in poverty. Do I have another choice? And as Christians, you have no choice either. In your prayer time this week, <coughs> in your prayer time this week, ask Jesus to help you in ways to reach out to someone. We all like to get compliments from time to time, and I'm always uh, try to thank you for them when I get them from you. Uh, then, uh, but but when you get a well done, my good and faithful servant from Jesus. 
let me tell you, it's like the most wonderful feeling that there can be. This is the way to be a Christian. He loves you so much that he offers you ways to come closer to him. Accept this love in ways that are pleasing to him. This is why you can say, thank you, Jesus, for his love, and especially his grace. grace. And thank you, Jesus, for first loving us. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you so much for all that you do, Lord, and, and uh, we just need help, Lord. You know, we, we're just human, and we just need help all the time, especially going out and serving others. Help us to find the needy and, and, and be with them and help them, Lord. Help us to move a little bit instead of sitting down all the time. We just thank you for this love you give us, this love we don't deserve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This concludes our service for, for today and, and now for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you and may his face shine upon you as you go out into this wonderful world that he made just for you, serving him. Go in God's peace. Thank you and may God bless you.